Our lives had started to seem dull for a while, for both of us. But, of course, after chaos hits, you eventually long for that feeling of dullness. Oh, why does it take chaos to make us appreciate dullness? I have trouble saying no. Most women do, I think. It's not pleasing or something. Anyway, Jim said to me he got a letter from someone he'd known in high school. And she said in the letter that she was going to be in our neck of the woods. And I hate that phrase, neck of the woods. But, of course, I didn't say anything. And could she maybe drop by to reminisce about old time? And wouldn't that be fun for me, I thought. But, of course, I didn't say anything. I don't know. I thought it might be kind of fun to mull over the old high school days, you know. Prom, the high school paper. I was the editor. <laughs> oh, won't this be fun, I thought. So, I said to Marcia, I said, what do you think, honey? Would you mind if Wanda Friedrichson gave us a visit? No, darling, I wouldn't mind. I'm sure it'll be fine. Why couldn't I have said what I felt? Of course not, you fool. Why do I want to meet some old girlfriend of yours and be bored to death with tired old stories when I'm desperate to be in my bed, unconscious, thinking and feeling nothing? Why didn't I say that? And Marcia really didn't seem to mind, so we made arrangements for Wanda to visit. I mean, it really, it might have been fun. Uh, in high school, Wanda had been quite a looker. I'll get it, honey. It must be Wanda. Wanda? Jim. Jim. Oh, Jim. Hello. I'm Marcia, Jim's wife. Oh, hello. Nice to see you. I was just so excited at seeing this guy. Hey, guy. Hey. How you doing? I'm fine. Wanda? Were you expecting someone else? Uh, no, no, it's just, didn't she used to be blonde? Yeah, and I didn't used to be fat either, okay? Although, I'm not really fat. My women's group doesn't allow me to say that. I just have a food problem, and some of it shows. But really, I just lost 20 pounds. You should have seen me last month. Oh, you seem quite thin. Oh, you're sweet. I may look thin, but I'm really fat. Do you have anything I can eat? Well, it, no, I was just kidding. It was a joke. You know, it seemed like this setup. You know, I talk about my weight, and then I say, can I have some food? <laughs> but if you're hungry... I am not hungry. Say... Jim, I love your wife. She reminds me of my mother. No, 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 the positive side of my mother, really. I like both of you. Thank you, I like both of you. What? Well, I like you, and I like Jim. Well, you better. You're married to him, you lucky dog, you. Oh, give me another hug. Oh. Why don't we go sit in the living room? Oh, I love this room. It's so country. Did you do it, Marcia? Well, we bought the furniture, but I never thought of it as doing it, actually. Well, it's wonderful, and I ought to know, because I have terrible taste. What? Well, I mean, I can evaluate good taste in others because I have such bad taste in all my own choices. I mean, for instance, my house, oh, my house looks like the interior of a Baskin-Robbins. You know, everything's plastic, and there are all these bright yellows and dark chocolates. I mean, really, the only thing worse than being married to me is to have me decorate your house. Oh, I'm sure you underestimate yourself, Wanda. Isn't he a dreamboat? You're a dreamboat, dreamboat. Well, say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have anything to eat? Well, dinner should be ready soon. Oh, Lord, I don't want dinner yet. Just some pretzels would be good, something to lunch on. Well, how about some pate? Pate? Where'd you get her, honey? The back of the New Yorker? <gasps> sure, honey, I can eat pate as long as you have some crackers with it and maybe some pretzels. Fine, I'll be right back. Oh, Jim, she is a jewel, an absolute jewel. I know, we've been married 13 years. Whoops, an unlucky number. Oh, but she's a jewel. I hope she 
not hard like a jewel. Just precious. Yes, yes, she's very precious. Good. You know, I, I hate to say this, but I don't recognize your face, actually. That's very perceptive, Jim. I've had plastic surgery. N oh. Not the fancy schmancy kind to make your face look better. It was so they couldn't find me. Who couldn't find you? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, well, now you've piqued my interest. Oh, you men are always so impatient. Here's the pate. Oh, thanks, honey. I'll just have the crackers. Stoned wheat, then. I love this. She's a jewel, Jim. Thank you. Would you like a drink? <laughs> Don't feel you have to have a drink. What's the matter? Anyone want to play Scrabble? Marsha, Wanda is trying to express her feelings. She wants to tell us. Why do I ever let Jim take Est? Now, whenever I try and manipulate anyone or shut them up, he'd tell me I was interfering with their expressing their emotions. Go ahead, Wanda. Tell us. Start at the beginning. Well, it all started the summer after high school graduation. Jim and I had gone to the prom together. And though, of course, nothing had been said, everyone just kind of presumed he and I would get married. Really? Who presumed this? Well, everyone. My mother, my father, me, everyone. Gosh, I mean, I knew we dated. But... Dated? Jimbo, we were inseparable. From February of senior year to June senior year, we spent every spare moment together. You gave me your class ring. I have it right here. Jim gave me the nicest engagement ring. Uh-huh. Well, where is it? Oh, here are those pills. These I carry with me in case I feel suicidal. Forget the ring, Wanda. Tell us why you cried a few minutes ago. Isn't it obvious? Isn't what obvious? Seeing the path not taken. I could have had a happy life if I'd married you. Excuse me for talking this way in front of you, Marcia. But I just want you to know how lucky you are. That's fine, whatever. No, not whatever. Jimbo. You see, I do that in front of Marcia so she'll know how lucky she is. Thank you. I feel lucky. So anyway, after the prom, Jim went away for the whole summer, and he didn't write me. I didn't know you wanted me to. And then you and I went to different colleges. And then, when you didn't write me, I was heartbroken. Wanda, if you felt this way, why didn't you tell me at the time? You haven't said anything in 15 years. I've been very busy. I'm, I wish I, you know, it's very hard to be open about emotions, especially painful ones. Anyway, then I went to Ann Arbor, and, oh, Jim. Marcia, I'm so ashamed to tell you this. I was promiscuous. Really? Yes. Gosh, these crackers sure are making me thirsty. When you offered me a drink, I didn't think it was going to be my one chance. Oh, sorry, would you like something to drink? Yes, thank you, Marcia. Anything at all. Preferably with vodka. She really is a jewel. She really is. Now, where was I? Must have been. I was flunking comp lit. Well, I have such a reputation. The boys would stand outside my dorm window and they'd call out my name and they wouldn't stop calling until I'd go down and join them in the bushes. Ugh. Awful. I became a campus joke. But it was because I was drowning my sorrow, you see, in flesh. Here's your drink. I hope you like Kool-Aid. Yeah, I love it. Mm. Delicious. So anyway, once the campus minister had to give a whole sermon against me, which made me feel just awful, and all because I was pining for you. I wonder if I should check on the roast. Uh, please don't go just now. And of course, I was raised Catholic, so I knew that what I was doing was very, very wrong. But I was just so unhappy. There, there, Wanda. Oh, yes, there, there. And I 
my second husband gave me the herpes. And every time the first one would call to threaten my life, it would trigger an outbreak. Herpes is often set off by emotional turmoil, you know. Yes, I've heard that. And then I thought the hell with men. Maybe I should become a lesbian. So I tried that. But the problem was, I just wasn't attracted to women. So the whole experiment was a dismal failure. Doesn't anyone want dinner yet? Marcia sounds hungry. Sure, honey. Let's go eat. And then Fred said to me, I married you because I thought you would be my anchor in the port of life. But now I think you're stark raving mad. Mrs. Gravy, please. I said, you think I'm crazy. Who's the one who has hallucinations and thinks that shoes go on the hands instead of the feet? Not me, buddy boy. Did he take drugs or something? Please don't ask her any questions. What? Well, I mean, I want you to tell the story in your own way. Thank you, Marsha. You know, Jim, I feel really close to Marsha. I'm glad. Could I have the butter, please? Sure, honey. So then one day, the washing machine blew up. And Fred says to me, you did this. Everything about you is chaos. I'm leaving, and I'm taking Tranquility with me. <laughs> you said that? Don't ask her any questions. Tranquility was our dog. And I said, look, I'm the one who fed Tranquility, and took care of her, and walked her, and took care of her worms. And she used to vomit all over the living room rug. And you know, you can't just leave it there. Uh-huh. Hold that thought. I'll be right back. Where did you go? I needed some aspirin, and I just couldn't go back downstairs again. When's she leaving? Oh, I think she's staying overnight. What? I think she's did staying... Did she say that, or did you say that? What are you two talking about? Marcia was just brushing her teeth. Oh, it's so intimate, brushing your teeth, isn't it? You know, you know, when you live with someone, you don't have any secrets. I remember David said to me, why didn't you tell me you had herpes? And I said, I forgot, okay? People forget things, all right? He said, no, not all right. I'm going to have this for life. I said, so what? You have your nose for life. Is that my fault? Yes, but his nose wasn't your fault. Well, what? Nothing. I see your point. So then I, I just thought I'd stay out of relationships for a while. So I went to work for this lawyer. Only, he wasn't a regular lawyer, he was a kingpin. Kingpin? Of crime. He was a kingpin of crime. Of course, I didn't realize it. Eventually, of course, I had to have my face redone so they couldn't find me. Jim says you're expecting to stay overnight. Oh, thank you. I'd love to. I feel like I'm just beginning to scratch the surface with old Jimbo here. Jimbo, what was the name of that girl? Who won Homecoming Queen? The, the one with the teeth? What was her name? I don't remember. She had teeth. Big teeth. I'd like to leave the bathroom now. What? Let's go to bed, shall we? Well, I thought that you must be tired, and we need to make your room up for you. I didn't know that you were... were uh, well, we need to make it up. I hope there's a quilt. I love quilts. I'll look for one. You have to move, or I can't leave the room. I'm holding you hostage. What? Isn't it awful the way they take all these hostages these days? <gasps> Reminds me of my life with Augie. George put this blindfold on and say, call me Momar, call me Momar. And so when Leonard learned how many men I'd been with and the two women, he said, Wanda, you are a worthless piece of trash and I can't marry you. And I said, don't you think I know how worthless I am? Do you think this is news? And he said, I wish I could forgive you, Wanda, but I can't. And so he walked out the door and never came back. Well... And then I met Rudy, and I thought he and I were really going to work out. But then one day I came home, and there he was, all dressed up in my clothes and lipstick. And he's walking around the bedroom saying, I am Wanda. I am Wanda. And I said, you're not Wanda. You're a transvestite. And then I met Arthur. And oh, God, he had this really crazy ex-wife who was still in love with him. So, of course, she was very threatened by me. She used to follow me. And then Howard said he wanted me to kill his mother. And I said, are you crazy? I've never even met your mother. Are you asleep? Jim? Marsha? Well, we weren't really asleep, but it was all we could think to do to make her shut up. She really was a nightmare. But, you know, of course, I... I started to wonder if it was my fault. I mean, it sounded as if her life had been ruined because she hadn't married me. 
Not that I'm so wonderful, but uh, compared to some of the people that she's hooked up with since, uh, I must seem pretty wonderful in comparison. I mean. The disgusting thing was, I could see that at the same time Jim saw she was crazy, he was also titillated by her interest in him. Isn't that stupid? Don't you just hate him? Where's our lady at the unending conversation? She seems to be asleep. Was she always this way? Well, she was always vivacious. I see high school prom queen girl most likely to get herpes. Lots of people get herpes. Yes, but they don't talk about it for three hours. Why are you so hostile to her? Is it because she's attracted to me? Yes. You want some coffee? Are you attracted to her? Oh, come on, Marcia. She's an emotional mess. And you're putting up with it very patiently. Why is that? Well, that's because I feel sympathy for her. She's someone I knew once who had a life, and look what's happened to her. But she's attracted to you. Well, now, don't make a big thing out of this. It's just slightly interesting for me, that's all. Oh, fine. I understand. I think I'll make a trip to the nearest loony bin and find some mental patient who finds me attractive. Then I'll bring him home and make you suffer through a 48-hour visit while he drools on the carpet. Aren't you overreacting? I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's talk about something else. This silence is familiar. It sounds like our dinner conversations when Wanda isn't around. Being quiet after 13 years of marriage doesn't mean anything is wrong. It can mean you're comfortable together. I'm excited that you're dead. Fine, or that you're dead. You were more talkative with Wanda last night when she was taking a breath from time to time than you've been with me in oh, months. Just stop making a big deal out of this because it's no big deal. You know, it's just... Well, haven't you ever found it kind of exciting when someone finds you attractive? I forgot. that life out there? You awake? Do you like no coffee? Thanks, Jimbo. Oh, I love this. You're like a little house slave. I knew I should have married you. Where's Marcia? Did she wake up dead or anything? No, she went to the a and I think. Terrible me to say. I don't want her dead. I'm just because I'm so jealous of what she has. Oh, I'm not so special. Oh, Jimbo, you are. Mm. Oh, I slept wrong on my back, I think. Oh, a tense muscle or something. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, yes, yeah, very tense. I once had a sore back myself. Would you maybe rub it for me? Well, I'm not a professional masseur, but I'll give it a try. Oh, would you? It's the lower back, you know. Marcia, I didn't hear the car. I don't blame you. It was very noisy here. I'm giving Wanda her back hurts. Oh, he gives the most wonderful back rub. I'm so pleased to hear it. Do you need the number of a back specialist, perhaps? If you can't walk, we can arrange for an ambulance to take you there. No, Marcia, really, it's just, it's really quite innocent. Hey, Marcia, really, I know he's your guy. You're her guy, Jimbo. It was just my back. 
follow what you say. Probably tension in your lower back. I have a tension headache today in the back of my head. It feels like my head's going to split open. I think I'll lie down. Jimbo, when you're finished with her back rub, the car has a flat tire on the corner of Pleasant View and Maple. I thought you'd like to do something about that. Oh, I'll go now. No, finish the back rub. You've convinced me that it's innocent, so finish it. I can't talk right now. I've got the splitting headache just remembering it. Look, it was innocent. Well, not totally, of course, and I guess Marcia sensed that, but basically in terms of what really happened, it was innocent. And besides, sexual fidelity is so hard, don't you think? For some people, I guess it is. Let's change the subject. Let's talk about something non-controversial. All right. Well, in the afternoon, we played games. Trivial Pursuit and uh, Monopoly and Clue and Scrabble. Whenever she'd win, Wanda would shriek. And I already told her I had a headache. And there she was, shrieking. The walls were vibrating. I had to get out of the house. <laughs> I made my mistake. The scotch and soda, the white wine, and the vodka cranberry juice. They didn't have Kool-Aid? I'm sorry, madam, this is the closest we could get. Well, there's mud in your eye. You know, I'm thinking of maybe moving up here to the country with you all, finding a little house to rent. Nothing happening in my life right now, and I don't know, I think just this might be just the change I might need. Yes, I think this might be just the change I need. I'm almost through with my facial surgery. I've had everything done on my face except my nose. I kept that the same. Oh, you're right. I, I recognize your nose now. Yes. Will there be anything else? What, done to my face? Anything else I can do for you at the restaurant? Could I have another scotch, please? Yes, sir. So, you're going to move up here, are you? Going to sweep up and stick your feet in the ground and root yourself in our little neck of the woods, are you? Marcia, we don't own this area. I feel differently. I don't want you moving here. Is that clear? I don't want you invading my life with your endless ravings anymore. Is that clear? Is everything all right? No, everything is not all right. This woman is trying to invade my life, and this man is too stupid to see it and hide from her. Don't you realize she's insane? Could I have that scotch, please? No, I'd like to check. Are you unhappy with your fish? I'm very unhappy with the fish. It has too many bones in it. <coughs> Shouldn't one of us do the Heimlich maneuver? I don't want to do it. I don't like her. Marcia, can you do it? It's my first day. I don't know how. Can't you do it? Oh, very well. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I thought I was a goner. I was sorry to see her go before the weekend was over. I mean, she was bringing chaos into our lives, but I, I found it all stimulating. She made me feel more alive. The next day at the restaurant was considerably less intense, and eventually, as time went on, I was made head waiter. For a while, I liked the added responsibility and the additional money, but, well, after a while, I realized I wasn't doing what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be an actor. But then the story isn't really about me. Wanda hasn't been found yet, but she's probably going to be fine. She's sort of like a bacteria. Wherever she is, she, she just grows and goes on and on just fine. So she's, she's probably going to be fine. But even though she was kidnapped, her visit was awful. 
But it made me realize that Jim and I weren't happy. We'd stopped experiencing joy. Right, we weren't feeling joy much, so we joined an aerobics class. Yeah, to get the blood moving. When you move around, you tend to feel better. Right, and we're going to a marriage counselor who specializes in breaking down fear of intimacy in people who've known one another for over 10 years. And we fit that. All told, I guess Wanda's visit helped to stir us up in a good way. All told. Right. right. Blessings come in unexpected ways. Right. <laughs> and maybe soon we'll be happy. Right. I could be happy with you if you could be happy with me i'd be contented to live anywhere what would i care as long as you were there skies may not always be blue but one thing is clear as can be i know Could be happy with 